Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this amazing new video. Well, today, what we're gonna do today, or hopefully today, not the whole next week, <laughs> we will try to get a Linux booting up on this iMac G3 here. Now, I had, I have tried booting up a Linux on an iMac G3 in the past. Uh, I just never was so successful to boot a GUI, to boot a graphic user interface. I never, I always installed just the base Linux, but I could never get it to display something. Now that was the only, these are Macs were like the only ones that had these problems, the G3s. Matter of power PCs, they would never have this problem. Uh, so today I uh, met with um, a guy who knows pretty much everything about Linux. Like a, a total freak, knows everything, every fucking command that is there. Uh, and uh, he told me that uh, it could be something with the xorg.conf file. Now, I wouldn't call myself a complete Linux noob. I know what the xorg.conf file is. But I never quite knew what to do with it. Because I'm, I'm by no means a professional Linux guy. Now... I first didn't really believe him because he's not really a Mac person. He's not really an Apple fan and uh, he has no experiences with Mac computers. So, but, but anyway, I looked into it and seriously, there is this website which says the exact same problem that uh, uh, I have. Uh, that I, it just would not display anything and I need a modified xorg.com file for these machines. So it turns out he was right and uh, he led me to the right path where I could actually continue because I was always stuck in this because I never knew what to do. I googled and googled and nobody seemed to have a clue what the hell is going on. That could also be because not so many people install Linux on this old G3. So I need to download this particular file. <laughs> now here is the original article if all is for Ubuntu or Debian that's uh, what we'll actually try now oh. booting up a Linux on this is actually not any different than any other power PC you need a Linux medium and that's where I am not quite sure yet what I will use will I use should I, should I use Ubuntu or should I use Debian uh, I'm really thinking about Debian because it's a little more lightweight and a little uh, less bloated, if you know what I mean. Uh, but Ubuntu would also be cool, so I'm not really sure what I should do. Uh, this Mac isn't really the fastest machine in the universe. It's uh, uh, 400 megahertz G3 with half a gigabyte of RAM, so at least the RAM is a little half decent but it also has a solid state medium as a as a startup drive it has an SD card as a startup drive and uh, to not bore you anymore I will boot it up into OS 10 Tiger and don't worry all the Apple fanboys don't worry before you thumbs down the video I still I, I will still have Tiger after the Linux install because I have partitioned it into two partitions I have 17 gigs for Tiger and the rest for Linux. So if everything goes right, uh, Ubuntu or Debian will allocate the free space and just uh, install on the next two OS 10. So yeah, watch this boot up time. It's actually a pretty bloated uh, Tiger install. It's really old. I cloned it. It's an old image, like modified for me and a friend, completely modified. But it works. I was too lazy to run all these updates again and install software, so I just cloned it and it worked just fine. So, uh, yeah, this old iMac is quite fast on this SD card. I'm really liking it. Also, it makes it 100% silent. Seriously, 100%. There's no noise coming from this whole computer. Except like CRT when it turns on and except speakers when it's playing music. <laughs> kind of cool when you think about it. Another thing I will... I want to figure out um, is what, how much graphic power this has. You can see here it's the 400 megahertz G3, 512 megabytes of RAM. This is the hard drive. It's um, 
It says ST to compact flash adapter, but seriously, it's just nothing else in an ID to SD card. And we got 17 gigs of uh, Mac OS X space. And graphics, we have an ATY Rage 128 Pro with 8 max RAM. <laughs> yeah, it's not a lot, I know, but uh, has, it will have to do. <laughs> So I will also look how much free space we have, even though that isn't really that important. But anyway, I'm curious. We have 12.6 gigs free. That should be plenty. So I'm now going to decide what we will boot up here and then hopefully it works. So uh, I only found actually two ways to go. Number one, this will be my favorite way. I've got Debian 7 here. That's... Um, I think Wheezy, if I'm not mistaken. I always had good uh, experiences with Wheezy. Uh, that would be my preference. Uh, my other one would be Mint Power PC because it's uh, pretty much just because it's Ubuntu. Uh, I could also try Lubuntu, that would also be interesting, but I am so familiar with Lubuntu and I just, uh, well, it's not about familiar thing, I just want to see it booting, but you get the idea. So I might first try Debian, that would be my first preference. Mint Power PC would be would be like Ubuntu pretty much and Lubuntu would be I, I think Lubuntu will have serious troubles with its stupid power management uh, I've had these issues before on my power book and yeah the power book is quite newer than this computer is so <laughs> but before we can do all of this I will even I will see if this computer even likes the CD because this optical drive here in this iMac really despises any new CDs I hope this isn't too new I'm just going to check where it, where is it, Serial ATA, we don't have Serial ATA, there it is, the Matshita DVD ROM, well it looks good DVD ROM, <laughs> but it can't read most of it, so I will try this CDR, with Debian 7, and see if it recognizes it, and then, when it recognizes it, hopefully, uh, we can boot from it, and then hopefully, it will install. <laughs> That's all hopefully, because this optical drive in this machine has given me so many headaches in the past. Uh, and yeah, that, that sounds good. Oh yes! But this time it actually wants to work. There we go. We get Debian Wheezy. Even mounted, so that's great. And uh, yeah. I'd say, let's boot, mate. Reboot the machine, and... Hold down the C. I'm just making sure that you see it. Here you see C. Oh, you can't even see. Haha, <laughs> but you get the idea. Yeah, yeah, I have to do this joke. It's uh, standard and I uh, have to do it. Holding down C. And it looks like this iMac wants to boot for real. There we go. Yes, Debian. Welcome to Debian. Na, 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 na. If the system fails to boot with a wide screen which doesn't go away, try install video equals OF only. And I'm pretty sure that I have to do this. The following desktop environments are available. If you prefer a different desktop, blah, 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 blah. The default one is GNOME. Should I really do GNOME on this Mac? Isn't it too slow for this? I'm just gonna do desktop equals... Uh, LXDE because LXDE is pretty fast, but then again, I'm pretty I'm not sure if I should use it since the stupid power management You know what? I'm just gonna try it if it really boots and uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that we will not see this only once today because that would just be too easy Okay it's such a fun fact, I recently booted up a Linux via USB on my PowerBook and it w was way slower, so I don't know what the hell is going on there, but uh, looks like on PowerPCs it's uh, easier, faster to install via CD. Okay, uh, we got a menu, that's great. It will just through German and Austria, and now it's gonna look for this stupid server which it's hopefully, hopefully gonna find, I hope it. I hope that for the server, seriously. Keyword layout is German, yes. 
So if you've never been through a Debian install, this is the well way it looks. It's uh, pretty simplistic, <laughs> as Johnny Ive would say. Uh, it looks pretty shit, but it gets a job done, and it's pretty resource uh, low. So it you can do this on like the Pentium One, and I'm not I'm not shitting you. You can do this seriously. The problem with a Pentium One is then just a desktop environment, and I bet with you that installing Linux on a Pentium 1 is still way easier than it is on a G3. <laughs> but yeah. It's kind of a tech comedy. You know why? Because I'm installing a rather new operating system on my slowest computer in my whole collection. Yeah, this iMac is the slowest. From processor speed, it's definitely the slowest. Now it has a, an SD card which uh, it boots up with I think 60 megs of, of uh, read. The problem is the write. As you know this is the, the downside of SD cards. They, 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 there are so many that can read really really fast but once they need to write something, for example if I extract something on OS X, I extracted the open office suite. When I extract something it's horribly slow. It doesn't go past 10 megabytes or even less like six like a USB thumb drive pretty much but the read speed is pretty damn good so as you saw the, the boot up speed was actually pretty decent and if, if it wasn't for the bad write speed it would be just nothing worse than a hard drive so but since I don't care uh, I'm gonna keep this amazing SSD this ghetto SSD as I like to call it Mm -hmm. Okay, well I disabled it, I know, but still, what is it doing now? It's again doing the Ethernet connection thing. Yeah, it was successful, so why don't you go ahead? Oh, there we go. Well, calling the computer iMac G3 Ruby. Next. No fuck. Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Root password. Username. Yeah, as you can see, I've done it the first time. Okay. Okay. Now, I actually did uh, want to do a PowerPC Linux video on my G4 12 inch PowerBook. The problem is it died on me. It would just, uh, it would just not work. So I'm sorry, but uh, you will probably never see this video since it's a complete, it's, it's just nothing happening really. I got it booted up a couple of times, but it would just never successfully install it, which is always crash or, or just do a lot of weird things that are just annoying and well not really uh, anything to watch so yeah okay of course the iPhone needs to run then out of space when the most exciting thing comes and so I have to wait and I wasted so much precious time well now I wasted a lot of time too but whatever this is the one you want to have. The, the most, I'm just going to translate it, I don't know the English sentence. The most, or the, the, the biggest available free space. Not the whole hard drive, the most available free space. Because if you chose the whole hard drive, it will also uh, kill OS 10. And we don't want that, so we just take this and hope it doesn't work, because I'm not sure. And yes, we will have all the uh, data on home, and I don't know why I'm a beginner if I want it like this, because I don't know why you should do it differently, unless you're having a server or something like this. I'm not sure what Debian thinks there, but as you see, Debian is a little more pro-oriented system. It's not as user-friendly as Ubuntu is, and Linux Mint, or pretty much any other distro. Debian is like the uh, really stable, we hardly change anything, you need to know your shit version. So yeah, there's a lot of Macintosh and uh, there's a lot of Untitled and there's Freier Speicher and Freier Speicher again. 
in caps lock for some reason. And I'm thinking that this is correct. And as you can see, it's a 32 gig SD card. Yeah, 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 I'm just looking through it. We got swap partition, we got OS partition. We got boot partition. These weird partitions here, this weird one, this boot, this is for the, I think for the ya boot, I'm not sure. Not sure, and we have amazing 512 bytes of free space. Wow, that's massive data. Okay, let's do that. And uh, yeah, I really want to do it. And here it says it again. Partition 11, uh, blah, blah, SX4 and as what? Yes. And now it is creating the file system. So... <laughs> The great thing about SSDs and uh, SD cards for that matter is that you can't hear anything. So now the optical drive doesn't have to do anything probably because the installer, in blah, the installer already loaded into RAM. Now it needs to pull stuff from the CD again, well haha, but you get the idea. It's completely silent. But you knew that already, of course, because you grew up with SSDs. Haha, <laughs> my first laptop had 80 gigs of storage. Hard drive storage, 5400 RPM hard drive storage. And I was so pissed off by it that I upgraded it to an incredible 120 gig hard drive. And that was some serious money back then, I'm not shitting you. And also I had no experience at all what I'm doing, so I, you know, uh, installed Windows Vista. <laughs> so yeah, I moved on from then. <laughs> Believe me that. Even if it doesn't seem like this. <laughs> And we are having our first trouble. Yeah, as you know, you have to search for a server that uh, you, you can pull data from. And that uh, was always a little lame. Well, a little uh, uh, afraid of it since it never really worked. Now I it froze up on a on the like um, the server uh, thing. And so I had to shut it down. So I don't know what's gonna happen when I boot it up. I'm just really hoping that it does boot because I really don't want to repartition this. I really don't. So I'm not holding down anything. I'm just okay. Oh well, fuck. It has no bootloader. So well, how should it? How should it boot without a bootloader? <laughs> <laughs> so he has the data on there, but he doesn't have a bootloader. What the hell am I gonna do now? Well, I say I will reboot that thing and uh, hold down C. Why did I have to press on this stupid server? Why didn't I just skip it? It has a full installation medium on it in it anyway. It's got no. It's it's no minimal installation thing. Why did I do that? There we go. As, as I said, we don't have that. Uh, you only you don't see that just once. So, <sighs> whatever. Okay, we're back, and I now had to do the partitioning manually. Thankfully, it didn't delete anything, so I just had to like do it manually. But the partitions were already there, so. Uh, if I'm not completely wrong, it should work. We got the boot here, we got the X4 system here, and we got the swap here. And yeah, that should be the same as before, hopefully. Unless well, it's gonna throw me something else, and yeah. Okay. <laughs> Didn't know what, uh, what I'm doing is now, right now, but whatever. Okay, got this stupid blue screen again. What is this? Okay. Uh, did this uh, blah, blah, blah. What? I never had that before. Okay. Uh, it is an un. Uh, how did it write an un? A not clean. Uh, target. So. 
Well, I'm just installing it on a non-clean target. That's not good. It's not good at all. Whatever. Maybe it's gonna work. <sighs> Fuck you! Fuck you and your servers that don't respond and made me do this whole installation again. So, I will just, uh, fuck you, and, uh, what is that? Uh, no, we don't want that. Ah, fuck. We, we want that. Now, this video is gonna get blocked, because as I heard, you can't say fuck or shit anymore in videos. So, shit, well, shit. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's, uh, thing continuing. Continuing, continuing. Is it doing? Yeah, sure. They, okay, whatever. Okay. Looks like now we're ready to actually install the damn operating system. Well, at least. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to install. So, uh, uh, well, let's install these tons of software. <laughs> okay, so uh, the installation is done and the iMac spit out my CD here like, Bleh, I don't want that anymore. So let's uh, reboot the system and see if it at least uh, at least installed. I'm not expecting any graphics or I'm not expecting any uh, uh, thing, but uh, I'm expecting a Linux system and hopefully OS X is still accessible because I was a little scared when uh, it said the uh, like the um, the bootloader needs to be manually installed or something. Okay, that looks great. I'm gonna boot into OS 10 first to make sure it's still okay. You know, OS 10, are you okay? Are you, tell me, are you okay? Yeah, there we go. OS 10, yeah, still there. There we go. Hopefully, you Apple fans are happy now. Okay, OS 10 is still here. Let's reboot. Now, let's boot into L. Linux. Not even sure if that works. Because. Bootloader is here, but it's the system here. The system is here. Now, does it work? Okay, that, that looks promising. It, there it is, ATI Rage. Okay, whatever. Sorry, sorry. It's too fast. Can't read it. And now it's probably going to greet me with... Uh, hello... But, uh, like, welcome to Linux, and, yeah, that's it. But that's fine for me, because that's, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, it's running Debian 7. Um, MHG3 Ruby login. Okay. Let's, uh, log in with root. And first, let's do a... Up, get update, okay. We don't have internet, I think. So I was uh, interrupted, um, but I'm uh, about to type in the x11, uh, the xorg.conf file, which hopefully will save everything. But uh, I gotta see it positive. I got Linux running on the iMac G3. Wasn't even too hard. I had to format it manually again because it, you know, didn't want to work with these stupid servers. Which I will get to after I've booted into something. Uh, and yeah, I, I gotta see a positive. Uh, it's booting up right now pretty fast. It's done. That's quite awesome. Uh, and yeah, I just gotta type in this xorg.conf uh, and then we should be good. So, looking quite good. Gotta see it that way. So uh, I'm kind of in the middle of typing this and it's actually quite cool to type that yourself because I'm not completely new to programming at all. I did uh, a lot of PHP in school, also a little Java, HTML of course, uh, and also C++ and 
it's kind of cool also with the little Linux, but we never went in, unfortunately too in depth with that. And it's quite amazing because this is how Linux loads the driver. As you can see, I just entered the graphics card, the ATI Rage 128 Pro, if I'm not, I mean, it says here, I'm actually three slot. I, I, I can't really remember, but I don't think any IMAX had different graphic cards. So, I mean, that should work. And uh, here I'm uh, about to make some subsections uh, with display resolution. So this is how it works. I'm quite amazed. It's quite interesting, pretty cool. Uh, although I don't really see anywhere uh, the full resolution for some reason. Maybe that does it itself. I don't know, but I'm just happy if it shows anything. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, I'm done. Got all these subsections in. Uh, hopefully I didn't um, make a mistake on typing, but uh, then it's not going to load. So, I'm about to save it on xorg.conf. And now, shall we test it? Holy shit. Okay. Now, it doesn't have start X. So it might be that it could not boot at all because it doesn't even have an XORG dot. Uh, what am I saying? It doesn't have this X server XORG core. Well, I need to go in a bit, but this is a success, even though we don't have anything running because we don't have anything. <laughs> we got a uh, screen. So um, what happened was I made some typing mistakes. Um, first I, drew, I wrote drive instead of driver, so it wouldn't um, load, of course. And also I forgot to install XORG and that's where, you know, um, Debian is a little more advanced since uh, Ubuntu already brings all of this Debian you need to do that yourself, but now even though there's nothing uh, That's a quiet success. So I will not go and uh, Probably tomorrow we'll continue this little adventure. Alrighty, it's a day later and uh, uh, Finally got everything set up on this iMac. So yeah, uh, I think we should boot it up. No, the last time you saw it, uh, it was uh, showing a black screen with a cursor, and um, that was a good thing. Now I did show a black screen and nothing else because uh, it didn't have any desktop environment installed at all. It had um, just a bare bones Debian and nothing else. So I went ahead and installed LXCE and XFCE. I definitely prefer XFCE. I just installed LXDE because of speed reasons and because I found out that this iMac is actually pretty capable of running the XFCE desktop. I decided I'll to use it with the XFC since I prefer it more than the LXDE. Uh, and I also installed a pretty lightweight um, uh, login screen, which we'll see just in a second. There we go. Pretty simplistic, yeah, I know. I'm gonna move you a little closer there. So we're gonna log in. It's hopefully, the session is hopefully set to XFC. Otherwise I will have to log out again. Yeah, no, yeah, okay, that's the wrong one. It's LXD right there. Let's log out. But as you can see, it does work. It's a pretty working computer right now. I, I don't actually know what is what there is not to work. There we go. Start XFC. And I entered it wrong, great. Speakers do work. I will show you that. Microphone does even work. All the ports work, screen works. Yeah, uh, there isn't really anything that is not working on this anymore, which is great on a power PC. Definitely is. So, here you go. That is the desktop. So, we made it. We installed 
successfully Linux on a PowerPC G3 iMac. That is amazing. I'm just gonna go into the System Profiler to show you some stuff. And as you can see, it's actually quite snappy. It's uh, not too slow. And uh, it's, I will tell you, it's uh, even snappier than it is on, on OS X in terms of uh, usability. So if you want to use it for something, I'd go with Linux. Even though OS X is still very capable, it's not too slow, especially not with this SD. But still, I would go with uh, Linux. It definitely needs less RAM. That's what I figured out so far. Uh, it does need more processing power though. So, you know, it's kind of give or take actually. It's about the same, but I would say it's a little faster on opening up stuff, definitely. So as you can see, here it is, 400 megahertz. Yeah. It's running Debian and there's the display. Yeah, yeah, that's my custom written uh, Xorg file, and it does work. So, pretty amazing. Here we have VLC, and of course, latest version. Oh, yes. So, because of this latest version, there you go, uh, for PowerPC at least, um, I can do a lot more stuff. Now, I know there is quite, there are quite a new more versions out there than version 2.0.3 but if you go to the uh, to the OS X version you will only get 0 0.86 or so for the G3 and here you can have 2.0.3 which is not too old so I mean yeah I love this player definitely everyone should love it it's just cr crazy good uh, we have Ice Weasel here um, Pretty much the Firefox, you know, I mean, I could install Firefox there, and bloody hell, I'm gonna do that just for the sake of running the latest Firefox on a G3. It'll be slow as hell, but still, there is Ice Weasel. Now, oh, yeah, the Ice Weasel is quite behind actually, it's version 31, still a ton newer than the OS X version of course, and uh, it's definitely usable, definitely, not saying that it's not usable, I'm just, I'm just saying that it's uh, kind of behind, but anyway, I don't think we have internet yet, let's just try. No. Which connection is untrusted? Now well, that's gotta be something with this. Um, I can't really set the clock, that's one problem. Um, now I'm gonna go into the other web browser, Midori, there we go. But it, I seem to have internet, so yeah, it's really old. Yeah, so. Um, really all uh, there is not any more to show you other than just the basic Linux it's pretty much working quite okay to use of course not fast but still it's uh, about the same as a Raspberry Pi in terms of performance but still quite awesome it's also running off of SD so it's completely solid state and yeah, gonna play for you to end this video, a song. Let the copyright strike. Yeah. With what is it opening? VLC is always good. Maybe not the best song to test the speakers, but here you go. So yeah, thank you for watching.
see you in the next video.